or false with direction. And the, the last option is a clockwise and counterclockwise. So each channel contains two outputs. After we used, after we, de we defined the, the channels, the three channels, we defined two, um, two operands, one memory integer for the status and the success bits for the, uh, for the feedback of the, of the configuration function of the model. The status can be, can be um, the status can be that the, that the configuration went successfully or that there's something, something went wrong. It can be um, the full, the full list of statuses is in the help file, and, but it is the usual, usual messages such as the, that wrong values were uh, entered. Okay, I'm, I'm going back to the three channels. Three channels, we said that it, they can contain either pulse, pulse and direction, or, or uh, uh, one output for clockwise and second output for counterclockwise. But there is a um, certain combination available for the, for the three channels, because not all three channels can be defined to do all, all three possibilities. What I mean is that for uh, the first channel, if you choose pulse and direction, then I'm looking right now. I'm looking at the uh, example, at the second example, the second from the left. If you choose pulse and direction, the second channel can also be pulse and direction, but then you cannot choose, you cannot use the third channel. If you only choose pulse for the for the first channel, then you can al you can also choose pulse for channel one and two. Let's see the other possibilities. The third possibility is pulse and direction, and then if you choose pulse for the second channel, you cannot use the third channel. Again, uh, the fourth uh, the fourth but the fourth uh, combination is pulse, pulse and direction, and pulse. And the uh, fourth, the sixth, I'm sorry, the fifth, I'm sorry, is clockwise, counterclockwise, and then the second channel is disabled, and the third, the third channel can only be pulse. Now, you see, uh, in the table, you see that there are, there, there, there is a, um, the output numbers. These are the actual output num the actual outputs, the physical outputs. It means that there is no no much flexibility in the output um, in when use when choosing the output. It means that if you're if you're choosing the the first if you're choosing the first combination you have to use outputs 0, 1, and 2. If you're using the second combination, you have to use output 0 and 2 for the first channel, and this is the physical output. Physical output 1 and 3 for the second channel, and so on. So when using the PTO, we have to follow these instructions. They're all listed in the help file. This is the profile setting PTO module. When you, after you configure the PTO, if you, you configure the channel, then you choose the outputs. You need to configure the or set the PTO profile. The PTO profile it contains the actual the actual values 
for the PTO movement. Let's say um, the, the, the maximum velocity or the minimum velocity. The minimum velocity is the velocity in which the motor starts running because a motor, a stepper motor, doesn't start, it, it doesn't start to run until a certain, a certain input of uh, speed, of velocity. So this is, these are, um, these are um, uh, values that you, that you can get from the data sheet of the motor itself. This is not related to the, to VisiLogic. It's, it is related to the, to the motor that you're using, that you're controlling. And um, so, first of all, the first uh, value that you enter this, uh, this module is which channel you want to control. Because, as, I, as we said, as we seen, saw before, there are three channels, and for each one, you can, you can define a different profile. So, you choose the channel, then you choose the start-stop velocity which you get from the data sheet of the motor. You also enter the maximum velocity and the acceleration time and the deceleration time. These are times that you get from the, the motor data sheet again. If you choose a, uh, an acceleration time which is too small, you will see that not all time, not all the time, the the motor will be able to follow these values, and the same goes for for the deceleration time. As we said before, the PTO function can control the jerk factor. You can see here that the movement can can be dis can be decided to be from a, from a full trapezoid to, an, to a smooth S-curve. This is decided in, in uh, the value, the F value, which is, which is called the jerk factor. You enter the, the, these are the inputs that the function, that the model requires, and then the output will be, again, status and success. Status is a, a memory integer and a memory bit for success. Again, the status can, can be, it varies from, it can be a number of, there can be a number of statuses and they can be uh, wrong uh, values or that the configuration of the channel was not was not performed successfully, and um, again the full list is in the help file. Okay, after we configured the channel and set the profile of the movement, if we want to start the actual movement, we we need to use this module which is called PTO move. What we need to enter this uh, module is, first of all, which channel do we want to control, because we have three channels. And with the second uh, input is the movement type, the movement type, which is either absolute or relative. We said that uh, absolute movement is when we know the exact position on a certain interval. If we, don't, if we don't know the exact position, but we know where we want to be uh, relatively to where we are now, where the motor is right now, we use relative movement. So this is, that is decided in the PTO move model. The next thing we decide is the velocity. Now, this is not the maximum velocity that the, the profile, the movement profile can provide, but it has to be inside this, uh, this range 
okay? Because we cannot we cannot uh, set a velocity for a movement that exceeds the the maximum velocity we set in the profile. Okay. The next the, in the next input is the target position. The motor runs in uh, when it gets pulses. We need to tell him how long or how or where to get um, when we when we want to move in our movement. This is this is what where, where we put the this value in the target position. Now these four inputs they give us a movement. Again, as an output, we get a status and a success bit. If the movement was not performed successfully, we look at the status into the status operand and we see what went wrong. Of course, when the P when the PTO starts to move the output that we chose in the channel, they, they start to function as well. It means that we don't, this is not an output that we see here, in the, we, don't, we don't configure or, uh, or set it here, but we set it in the, in the, when we chose the channel, in the configuration, in the configuration model. So we don't see it here, but it's still it's still functioning. When the PTO is moving, when the motor is moving, we want to be able to control it and to monitor it. How do we do that? That's why we have uh, another PTO model, which is called the PTO read status. The PTO read status model gives us all the information that we need to know about the movement of our, our device, either a, a motor or, or a elevator, whatever. We, we, uh, we, have all the, we get all the information from the PTO read status model. The input that it needs in order to give us the information is only the channel number. We enter the channel number and the model gives us all the information. The first piece of information that we get is the current position. The current position is something that varies during the movement. It changes during the movement until it reaches the target value that we set before in the movement model. The current velocity. This, uh, the read status the read status uh, module gives us the current velocity of the movement. For instance, um, if we want to know um, which, uh, if we are in the acceleration or uh, or the maximum velocity, we can we can monitor the velocity using this um, operand that we set here. Now, the motor has. To, the motor has two directions. It can go either clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, in order to monitor this, we have this uh, memory bit, and it gives us the two options, either uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, or uh, back and forth, back or forth. It's uh, depending on the uh, on the configuration. We have another memory bit which we, we, we might find useful. It's called the PTO read um, in progress. And if we, we want to, um, to make a condition, to create a condition that is uh, regarding the, P, the PTO movement, we can use this uh, memory bit as a condition. Um, as with all the other modules, we have a status and success, uh, which gives us the rest of the information that we might need about the movement.